Okay, today we're gonna to be doing some electrical prep over at the in-laws house. Uh, if you guys recall, I put out a video, they got struck by lightning and it did quite a bit of damage to the panels. It, it We think anyway, it jumped. There's a buried line here from the house out to the shop and it jumped into that and it destroyed the breaker panels on both ends. But in looking over the system and checking things, we realized that the house itself is not wired properly. Um, the issue is this is a main panel on the outside, very common down here. And then inside their room right here, there's a sub panel that feeds the whole house. Well, that sub panel is not properly bonded. It's only got your three um, conductors, your two leads and your neutral. It does not have a ground wire bonding back from there to here. Um, also up in the attic, I'll show you here in just a second, um, the wires are not properly running conduit. So the first step of this rewire project that we're gonna be doing for them is we're gonna run a conduit out the top of the main panel here, up the outside of the house, which is not pretty, but I mean, come on, it, it can't, it's not any worse than this. We'll paint it to match. We're gonna go into the attic and then across the inside of the attic and back down and going into the, into the sub panel in here, it does have conduit in the wall, but it does not have full conduit in the attic like it's supposed to. So let me take you up here in the attic and I'll show you. So there's their sub panel on the wall over there. This attic ladder is stout. You know, this is one of those things that's interesting because they bought this house and had a full home inspection done on it. And the inspector did not catch this. He just signed off, oh yeah, everything looks great. He did catch that their air conditioning breaker was oversized, but he didn't catch the fact that they're missing a wire or that all of these ridiculous wires are laid up here exposed like this. So the problem is from a, from a code perspective and from a safety perspective, these wires only have a single insulation on them. Okay, so if somehow these wires get nicked, like this one already is, and you hit that with something metal, I don't know, maybe carrying a metal bed frame up the attic ladder into the attic, real easy example. Someone slips, bam, metal bed frame hits this wire, cuts it, exposes it, and someone gets electrocuted. So we're gonna be taking these wires out and uh, replacing them with wires that are properly run in conduit like it needs to be. So we see here going down into the fuse panel or breaker panel, they do have um, they do have conduit there to get you down inside the wall, but no conduit across here like there should be. And over here where it goes down inside the wall, I know you guys can't really see, but there's no conduit. It just comes up through a hole. So there's no conduit coming up through that exterior wall. So to fix and replace all that, we're going to just run new conduit all the way across the inside in here, run new wiring. It kind of sucks to do that because you know you're looking at it going well everything's working fine electric electricity's working fine and it is and it would be fine to continue but just from an all-around safety sort of do it right perspective um since we're working on the electrical in the house anyway we're going to go ahead and upgrade this there's also some other little shady stuff that i don't like you know like this it's just a straight exposed junction which i don't understand because he did, well, he didn't put a box on the outside of the house for that floodlight, but there is a trim plate. He probably had space behind that trim plate to do this junction, but they didn't. They just wired it up here in the attic, which, of course, I mean, that, or they could have put just a receptacle box here, just anything to put this junction and this connection in a box. I mean, they've got plenty of wire here off this pigtail. Anything to put it in a box, but they didn't. So anyway, like I said, a little, a little aggravating that the inspector you know, signed off on this house before they bought it and did not catch any of this stuff and didn't ding it um, because they could have gotten all that fixed as part of the sale contract. But it is what it is. We're going to fix it now. So there's these three, uh, like I said, there's, this wire is, is something different. I believe one of them is different because you would say, well, there's four wires here, Tom. So it's one of those just your ground, but it's not. Um, inside the main panel, if I remember, I'll show you inside this sub panel. Uh, you'll see that they have the ground bonded to the neutral. So one of these, one of these hot leads coming off here powers something else. I think it goes to their water heater or something like that. Um, anyway, just wanted to kind of show you over. I've got to go over here and look. I just drilled a pilot hole through from the outside to make sure that we are where we think we are. So let me try to sneak in over here. Well, hey, now you can see. Look here. You guys can see. Well, maybe you can't. It's dark. Yeah, I've got a flashlight here. I can turn on for you. Mm, boom. 
Look at that lovely lack of conduit. Wires just come up through drilled holes. Aggravating. I've got to find my pilot hole I just drilled through. It should be right there. Look at that. Party daylight coming through. And I had to make sure that it was clear of this stud. Again, what you guys can see here. Mm, oh, shoot. Sorry. I'm falling over. This stud. Okay. So look for the little break in our OSB there. There's the daylight coming through. So I had to make sure that we missed this stud right here in front of us when we came through with the hole saw. That's the next step. We're gonna cut us a hole through and get our conduit run. All right, so here's the part I really didn't want to do. <laughs> this is why I was avoiding the whole project, honestly. It was just the thought of cutting a hole in the house is always scary. I couldn't find readily available a masonry hole saw. I know they exist, but I couldn't find one quick enough. So what we did was we just used an angle grinder with a diamond wheel and basically chiseled a rough hole. Like I said, it, it's rough. And then had to use a Sawzall behind that to round out through the OSB. But got our LB here. It sets in there actually really well. So we'll caulk that little bit there. And actually probably just caulk all the way around the whole LB. But you see, it's flush up top. And it's good too, we're up here right under the gable. So it does help protect it from weather. But we'll caulk it in nice and tight. So now you can kind of see where we're going. LB's gonna come straight down here, down into the top of that main on the panel and then that gets us into the attic. So this was the first hard step. So now we're gonna start roughing in the rest of the conduit. And once we get it rough, roughed in, then we'll take measurements off the conduit to get a better idea what length wire we need. And then we'll go buy and pull wire. So like I said, this is, this is the hard part. This is what I've been avoiding on this project because I do have to actually kill the house and you know do some tie-ins. And I had to do this, this rough work. Um, once we get all the housework done, then we're going to be replacing that line out to the shop, which of course is easy because that can be done anytime without disrupting the house. So anyway, for now that's in. So let's get the rest of it plumbed up. Okay, so there's our first rough and dry and we're just we're just dry fitting everything right now just to make sure it all fits. We did run into one little boo boo here, one little hiccup. I don't know what you want to call it. This plate on top when you take it off, I thought it was a two inch outlet. It's like a two and a half. The ID of the hole is two and three quarter. I had bought a two inch um, <coughs> box adapter and it's too small. So we're gonna have to run, to run to the store and see what size we need to properly fit that. Um, so for now, I just put the plate back on. This obviously is too long. I just went ahead and cut a piece that I knew would be close. Again, we're just, just trying to dry fitting everything together. So we're working up in the attic, trying to get all that dry fit as well. Uh, and really all I'm waiting on right now is my father-in-law to find some nails or some screws or something to secure the, uh, the big pipe clamps but once he finds that we'll jump up there in the attic and I'll show you how it's looking okay so now y'all get an idea so right over there is where the penetration comes through the wall we just did an LB on the outside LB on the inside that way we can turn that 90 and keep it nice and tight technically there's two turns there but that's fine because that's what the LB lets you do um, keeping it tight <coughs> against the st <coughs> studs excuse me so we'll come across, that's a full stick. We've got this scrap actually left from the short piece that I cut outside going vertical. And this scrap actually is just enough. So we bought three joints, we're only gonna need the two, which is awesome. I mean, stuff's cheap, but it's always nice. We had to move that, <coughs> that light switch it was a little low. It was right in the way of the conduit. So we just pulled the nails, scooted it up a couple inches, hammered it back in. And then when we get over here, our conduit is right here. <sighs> Make it out of the lights, you can see there's our PVC conduit coming up. And what we got here is 245s actually. And what that does is it lets us, which again, we can't put it on there yet because of all the wires, but it lets us come off the top of that conduit and sweep out just a little bit um, with, a, with a true 90. Uh, if you had a true 90 to bend out to get around this stud here, you'd end up sticking out into the attic like this. So to keep it flush against the studs, we did the 245s and that gives you kind of a swivel right here at this joint. So you do a little bit of bend out and then you turn it back in towards the wall. Hopefully that makes sense. But it lets you make a smooth sweep um, and offset just a little bit. So like I said, we can't really dry fit that yet because these wires are in the way. We did catch one other um, annoyance, nuisance that angers, angers me. Um, since they didn't do the conduit proper, they have two wires that are not part of the main leads also running up through that two inch conduit. They've got this three quarter inch conduit sticking up, I think goes down to the box. I assume it does. I don't know what else it would be for unless it's some sort of little vent, but there's no plumbing in this wall. 
it's secure. I don't know that we're gonna be able to fit this wire and this wire. I don't think they'll both fit down that conduit, so I'm not really sure what we're gonna do with that yet. We might be able to knock out a hole in the top of the box or have, there might be a spare hole in the top of the box and we can just get lucky and fish a wire <coughs> down through the wall. I doubt we'll get that lucky, but we can try. Um, so yeah, aggravating when you have nonsense like that. I'll have to find a plan for that and figure out how to fix it. But for now, we're done with all the dry fitting of the conduit, so we're going to take some measurements off of it, go to town, and uh, well... I wanted, I was going to buy a new wire and replace all this, um, but I think with this big sweep that they put on it here, there might actually be enough length with this existing wire that we can take it off and reuse it. Uh, nah, it'll be close, because over there, where it runs down through the wall, it's pulled pretty tight. Going through the 290s and then back in the top of the box. I, I want to be cheap and try to fix it, but I guess there's maybe only like a hundred bucks worth of wire here. So we'll probably just buy new and then <coughs> we'll just rip this out and scrap it. I think that'll be easier because that'll let us basically pull all of our new wires in advance as much as we can anyway. And then that way we only have the house shut off for like an hour or so. That'll probably be the plan. Oh, so yeah, I got to figure out what to do about that as far as rerunning those wires. And, um... Yeah, then go to town and get some wire and get some whatever else we need. That's it for now.